One of the key components of an e-commerce chatbot is checking the status of your order. In this video, I'm going to dive into how you can connect Shopify to VoiceFlow to display orders. I'm first going to go through step by step how to connect Shopify to VoiceFlow via their APIs. We are then going to take this data that we've gotten back from the API and display this in a dynamic carousel. Additionally, if you watch until the end of this video, I will show you a secret that will streamline this entire process. I'm now working with VoiceFlow to bring you tutorials for e-commerce chatbots. So this is going to be one video in a series of building a much larger e-commerce chatbot. If you are an e-commerce store owner or AI agency looking to sell AI solutions, this is a great video for you. This is super easy to follow along with and you'll get access to the VoiceFlow template used in this video using the link in the description. My name is Brendan and I run Inflate AI where my team and I help businesses integrate the latest AI solutions. I also run a YouTube channel where I help showcase the many ways that businesses can use AI. For example, my one and a half hour step-by-step -step guide for building AI chatbots. So this here is the VoiceFlow template that I've created that has two different ways of capturing orders and allowing customers to see their order status. Let's do a quick demo of how this looks to the end user. So we're prompted to provide an email. Once we've provided that email, it's then going to list open orders and closed orders. So open orders are ones that are awaiting fulfillment and closed orders are either delivered or closed or sort of canceled orders. So I can go ahead and click into a particular order and then it's going to actually show me all of the items within that order. So in this case, this order one had a blue hoodie in it. If it had multiple items in that order, you would see all of those items in there as well. And then there's also got a several buttons that we can configure to do whatever we'd like to then continue on uh, from this stage. So to get started with this, the first block that I've gone ahead and used is a text block that just says, hey, what is your email? So this is that sort of a little bit of bubble text that showed up when we initiated the conversation. And this is purely asking them for their email. Moving on, we've got a capture block. So we've gone to listen, grabbed the capture block, dragged it in here. And what we can do is then now listen in for a response. So in this case, we obviously want to capture the email. And so then all I've done is added in a variable called email and then I'm continue on from there. Now you can also use an entity to capture the email. So in this case, I've just said capture any reply to email, but obviously if you didn't type an email, it would still go through. So something you can do is go over to the entity section. You can actually just create a new entity, go to data type and then click on email. And in this case, that sort of variable you create is only going to capture an email. So if somebody types in a random question, it's then going to ask them to actually provide an email. Um, and so this is something that you can do to just condition it uh, to make sure that it actually captures emails and doesn't just send through random bits of information um, causing problems down the road. Now I'll just quickly go through how the flow actually works before diving into how to make the actual API calls. So in this case, we're saying get customer. And so all this is doing is making a request to Shopify to get some customer data back. So we've taken that email, but now we need to actually get a Shopify customer ID and then we're gonna move on to the next block, which is using that customer ID to pull back the set of orders. So we need to get the customer from Shopify to then in order to get the orders. And once we've gotten these orders, we're moving on to a JavaScript step. And this JavaScript is generating a dynamic carousel that is going to take all of the orders that we've just pulled back from Shopify and place that into a set of carousel cards. Now don't get too overwhelmed. This code is gonna be available in the template in the description. So you can just copy and paste it or just clone this template and swap it out with your API keys. So moving on, we've got our next text block and this is simply just stating this bit of information here. And that's moving on to a custom action block and a custom action block sort of just runs any module we like, but we can do this via a bit of code. And so if I just go to the action body, you can see that it's using a variable and this variable was set by the previous JavaScript to then output our dynamic carousel. Once again, this is gonna be in the template for you and all you really need to change are the API keys. Moving on from here, we're now gonna get the closed orders. So previously we got the open orders. Now we're actually making a request to specifically get the closed orders from that particular customer. We're then doing the exact same process where we're turning this into a dynamic carousel using JavaScript. That's then gonna get sent into a custom action and then displayed to the user. And then once we've displayed our closed orders here, we're moving on to another JavaScript step, which is looking for the last event. So the last event is simply uh, a value that we can look for. And this is just going to look if anybody clicked a button on the either closed order or open order, we can see if they actually clicked uh, on the button. And if they did, then we actually want to look at that specific order. So in this case, we're going to get the order number. We're then going to make another request to Shopify to get all of the items within that order. So obviously somebody might make an order uh, and then within that order, they might have three different t-shirts. So we want to get those three different t-shirts. And then once again, the same process, we're generating a dynamic carousel 
using JavaScript and displaying that uh, to the user in a custom action step, which is using that code. So hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming. Once again, you're gonna get access to this template uh, in the link in the description. You can go ahead and clone this template. And the only thing that you need to swap out are the API keys and Shopify sort of endpoints, which I'm gonna cover in just a minute. They're the only things that you need to swap out to make sure that this starts working. So jumping into the first API block, this one is to get the customer data. So in this case, we're making a request to Shopify with an email. And then this email is going to actually give us back the customer ID associated with that email. So if we look at the API request at the top here, we're making a request to shopify.com uh, customers search. So this is a search function for customers that Shopify has, and this is how that API request looks. So to do this, you can keep this exactly the same, except for this little bit of text right here, which is actually gonna be your Shopify store name. And this is easily found within the URL of your Shopify store. So you can simply just copy that and paste it in here. Then moving on, we've got some headers. We've got content type. You just need to paste this in here below this application slash JSON. Then below this, we've got our Shopify access token. So obviously we need to authenticate with a sort of password that we have access to the Shopify store and that we're allowed to get access to this customer data. And we can do that via our Shopify access token. Now, jumping into Shopify, I'm gonna show you how to get access to this access token. You only have to do this once. And once you've got your access token, it will work for all of the other API requests. So it's super easy to do. All you need to do is go down to apps here, go to apps and sales channel. Then once you've landed in here, we're gonna actually go and click develop apps because we're now actually creating our own app. I've already got the app here, but I'm just gonna create another one. You can name this app, whatever you'd like. I'm just gonna say test. And once you've landed on this page, I'm just gonna click on configure admin API scopes. And we're gonna go down to the read and write customers. So once you've found these customers, you can just search customers, but we're gonna click on write customers and read customers, and we're just gonna hit save. Once you've got that, just type in orders, and we also wanna do the write orders and read orders. And then lastly, you can add products, so write products and read products. You don't have to do this. This is something that can be used for product recommendations in the future. So if you're looking to use this uh, with your API key and do product recommendations through Shopify on Voiceflow, I recommend turning this on so you can use it later. Now, once you've done this, just click the install app button right here and click install. And once you've done this, you'll land on a page that says admin API access token. Just click on reveal and then copy that. Make sure to save it as I don't think you'll be able to reveal it again. So just make sure to save it back into voice flow. We can now paste this under the heading of X Shopify access token. And now once we've done that, we should have full permission and access to get the customer data from Shopify. Then scrolling down a little bit, we've got the capture response, which is just capturing the customer's specific ID. So when we make this request, it will list out a series of IDs potentially, but all we wanna get is the first one for that email. It will likely probably only output one because there's only gonna be one customer ID associated with the email. But just to make sure, put in customers, bracket, zero bracket, dot ID. And then we're just applying that to a variable that I created called customer ID. And so now we're able to save that exact number uh, into this variable. Now moving on, we've got a get orders API request. So now this is very similar to what we just did. We've now just got a different request endpoint. Now this URL is looking for all of the orders for this customer under this customer ID. So all we've done is added in this URL here, and then I've added in the variable of customer ID, the customer ID that we just saved from the previous uh, API request. And now we can actually put this variable in the URL here. And so we're actually making the request to the right person. And once again, this specific one is for open orders. So that's why it says status equal to open. Uh, and so later on, we're gonna then do the closed API request. Then just below this, we've got the content type uh, headers and then we've got our access token exactly the same as the previous step in this case i'm capturing the entire response and you can do that by just typing response and i'm saving this into a variable called orders json the reason it's called orders json is because we're storing all the orders within a json structure and then we're going to be sending that into our javascript block now if you aren't familiar with javascript this might be a little bit overwhelming but once again you can get access to all of this code uh, with the template and it is all plug and play so this you don't have to modify in any way as long as your variables are equal to the same ones that are uh, inputted here, then it will work right away. So all that's happening here is that the orders JSON that we just saved is being saved into a new variable. It's then being sent into a function and this function is what generates our carousels. So this code knows uh, how many different products there are. It's configured to look at the specific order IDs and then actually count over that. So it will know if there are multiple orders to run this particular function multiple times. We'll then obviously output multiple different orders if there are multiple open orders. Then once this is done and generated, it then saves that into a new variable called carousel string. Clicking out of this, we're then gonna take that carousel string and then display that in a custom action block, which will then display a series of carousels. So once again, this JavaScript code is generating carousels for VoiceFlow specifically. So this bit of code here 
is the code required for generating and outputting a voice flow carousel. So with enough of these put together, we can then create a set of dynamic carousels uh, that will output automatically for us from the code uh, simply by inputting the variable uh, into a custom action step. Then from here, we're doing the exact same process that we just did. So we're now getting the orders once again from that particular customer ID. But in this case, obviously the status is now closed. We're just looking for the closed orders uh, to bring back. Then from here, we're moving on to the JavaScript step to pull through and generate the exact same set of carousels. But now this is obviously our closed orders. And then we're just displaying that once again as the dynamic carousel using the custom action step. Moving on from that, we're now getting the order number and we're getting the order number from whichever one they selected. So in this case, we're saying that the order selected is equal to last event dot payload dot label. So on VoiceFlow, anytime you click the button, it will save a label from that button you just clicked. And if I just go back into our JavaScript here, our buttons and labels are already set up for us. So we can see here label is equal to the order number. So in this case, when they click the button, we can immediately save the label that they just clicked or the label of the button they clicked. And that is gonna be equal to the order number associated with the one they just clicked. So in this JavaScript code, all we're doing is getting the corresponding order number. So we might not know which one they clicked, but by doing this, we're able to find uh, the exact order number that they're looking for. And that's important because the next step, we're now taking that order number specifically, and we're actually now searching up to this endpoint, which is looking at all of the particular orders associated with that one order. So very simply, it's the same process as the other API requests. We're inputting this endpoint with our Shopify store with this endpoint, and we've got the exact same headers. In this case, I've used the order select variable because we obviously want to use the selected order uh, to find all of the items within that order. And then for capture response, I'm using order.line underscore items, and this will capture all of the items associated with the order that they've captured. And I'm saving this to a variable called Shopify products. And then once again, very simply, it's the same process as before. We're now taking this code and turning it into a dynamic carousel that is acceptable by the voice flow custom action step. And as we can see here, there is a bit more than the previous JavaScript steps. And that's because I've added several more buttons uh, to actually do stuff with. So if you want to track the order, tr return it, cancel, get some product help or contact support. We've now, I've set up buttons to actually enable you to go down that path. And then from here, I've got another JavaScript block, which is turning this into a string. Now, all that means is that it's just it being accepted by the carousel. Uh, so in the other steps, I did the same thing. It was just included uh, in the actual JavaScript as well. You can see it was stringified, uh, but in this case, I've just separated it to show you the difference. And once you've done that, go into the custom action step, paste in the variable of the code that was generated, and you will now have all of the items associated with the particular order showing up in a dynamic carousel. So hopefully you now understand how that works here on VoiceFlow. Now, as promised at the start of the video, I'm now gonna go through a much more streamlined process for setting this up using a voice flow function. So in this instance, I'm using a voice flow function that has been set up by a community member of voice flow. And this will essentially take all of the work done here and put this all into a voice flow function, which will automatically spit out all of the orders to the corresponding email of our Shopify store. And the way that this works is that there's actually a Shopify app called Streamline Connector Voice Flow. And this Shopify app directly plugs into our voice flow assistant directly on the Shopify dashboard. And then through this, we can connect it to our function and it will automatically output all of our orders. So I'll just quickly show you this in action. I can just type in my email to the assistant, very similar to the other one as well. And so to give you a quick demo of this, it's very similar to the other process. Simply give it our email. It's gonna run through all of the APIs for us. And it's gonna spit out these series of orders uh, that are available to us. Obviously we can configure this however we'd like, but at the moment it will just give us all of the corresponding orders uh, that is in sort of ascending range. Now to set this up, all we need to do is copy over this Shopify function, which is gonna be on this template and also on the Streamline Connector website, you can get access to this function. But we can go ahead and click on the edit button here. We can see what this function looks like. So this function is a bunch of JavaScript code that is not only processing the data, but also making the API requests. So essentially everything that I did using the blocks previously is now being put into API requests uh, and processing in this JavaScript code specifically. And with a voice flow function, you can give it input variables and output variables. So in this case, we're giving it an email as it's the only information that it needs to get the actual orders uh, back from Shopify. Going back into the Streamline app on voice flow, all you need to do is click on add assistant and you just need to add in your API key, which is from this bit of graphic here. Just go to this button, click copy API key and paste it in and then just give it any chatbot name you want. And once you've gone ahead and done that, you're going to land on an assistant knowledge base page and it's just going to look like this. And all we want to do is click on create and then go and send orders. 
Once you've clicked the send orders button, we're gonna get a bit of instructions as to how to connect this to our function. So very simply in the instructions, I found option two to be the easiest. Just copy this endpoint URL here. This is specific to your Shopify store. Go to the function that you imported and then just replace this request URL with your URL that you just copied. So this entire bit of text here, replace that with your URL. And once you've done this, you are now completely done. So as long as you've hooked up uh, a capture step that is capturing an email and sending that into the function, the function can then run that email through the series of APIs in the code and then process that data to then output the dynamic carousel with the orders without having to do any of this setup. That being said, I do think it is super valuable to actually understand how this process works. So learning how to do this or just having an understanding of how it is working in the back end is something really valuable to know. If you'd like to get 15% off and a 14 day free trial to the VoiceFlow Streamline Shopify application, you can go ahead and just use my code Brendan and you're gonna get access to those benefits. I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to this VoiceFlow channel and if you'd go to my channel, Brendan AI Automation and subscribe to me there as well.